Okay, got a few people joining. Um, I will uh, wait a bit to see uh, if we get more coming in or not. Uh, got quite a few coming in quickly here. Um, so if you have questions already, go ahead and I'll, I'll wait a little bit maybe before I start doing a lot of talking to give some people a chance to come on. But uh, if anybody has questions right now that you want to throw out there or get started with, let me know. Let me see here, I'm planning on sharing my desktop, maybe to show some stuff, let's see if that's working. Can everybody hear me okay and see that? Yes, Professor. I get my chat up too. So feel yeah, feel free to unmute and if you have questions or use the chat. Get the chat here, make sure I can see it. Okay. All right. Uh, so, no questions? I'll talk about the syllabus and stuff like that here to get going. Let's see, we got 12 people. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> so hopefully I'll stay connected here. I tend to have some connection issues, bandwidth issues at times. Uh, let me get the syllabus up and I'll just start with that. You guys can see that, right? Syllabus. Um, all right, so, well, uh, I'll start by describing the course a little bit, the structure. Uh, yeah, the, the session is being recorded, so, um, so yeah, like I said uh, in my email, I'll try to make certain that we record all these. Uh, I've got it set up to automatically start recording when I start these, uh, and I'll post them. I'm not certain how. Maybe I'll just post them on YouTube or something, so. Um, like I, I did. So, oh yeah, by the way, so if you haven't found it, um, I maybe hit it a little bit, uh, but there is like a YouTube um, uh, playlist uh, that I'm developing. Um, and I thought I had a link to it on the README for a class repository. I'll check that. Um, maybe I didn't put a link on there. So. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is near the bottom, kind of. So you have to kind of find and search for it. I'll maybe try to put that in a more prominent place. But um, but yeah, all the videos I've gotten so far are up there. You can find them there. Um. All right. Let me, let me talk a little bit about the structure of the course and assignments and plans and stuff first. Um, see if anybody has any questions about those to start with. Uh, so we do have a required textbook, the hands-on machine learning textbook. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get that. So, but, but you, you probably, you're, you're definitely going to need to get that and do the readings, I think. So, so I don't think most people will, um, will, will find it, uh, possible to just use the lecture notebook. So, so you'll want to read along with the, uh, with the assigned uh, uh, chapters and stuff as I give them. All right. 
Um, some other kind of recommended books. Um, all these are good ones, but um, you know, just to, if you want to get into deeper into different things or get some different perspectives, you might want to check those out. Um, so this course uh, is, is uh, machine learning. Um, we've got a couple of, of different goals here. So, I mean, I mostly want to get people to the point where uh, you've been exposed to uh, the, 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 the most used, the most basic uh, machine learning uh, algorithms and methods and things, okay? So, um, and can, maybe as a secondary goal, I mean, we are going to be using Python. Um, and I hope everybody's working on your dev box, getting that set up. So, um, um, but uh, using Python with an Anaconda installation um, and uh, IPython notebooks, or actually called Jupyter notebooks nowadays. So, so, so kind of a secondary goal of this course is is getting some exposure to um, kind of common tools that allow people in machine learning use and, and data analytics and things. And so, so these are very popular and used by lots of people, the, the Python um, data analytics stack and scientific Python stack. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll cover all these things, you know, the, the basics between uh, the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Um, we're mostly going to be looking at supervised learning techniques for maybe about two thirds or more of this course. So we'll start with uh, linear regression and logistic regression, which you know are, are kind of actually, uh, I mean, more from uh, statistics um, than than what people might necessarily think of as machine learning. But they're very, they're good kind of um, introductions to the general principles of the other things that we'll look at. So. We'll look at a couple of different techniques, um, uh, nearest neighbor techniques, uh, support vector machines, um, tree-based methods, um, so, and, and, and so on. And, and then we'll spend a little bit of time near the end, we'll look at some unsupervised learning. So there's kind of, kind of this major distinction between supervised and unsupervised methods. Uh, so we'll spend a little bit of time with some unsupervised methods. Um, so, I, I don't necessarily, you know, um, I, I, I don't expect you to know Python already. So, so lots of people come to this course, um, haven't done Python programming before. So I'll spend about the first two weeks or so kind of just uh, doing some uh, Python and stuff. Not enough to, to, so it's not really a programming course and it's, it's not a Python programming course, right? Uh, but um, I, I, and Python is a relatively easy language to pick up, I believe. So, so I think most people can pick up the basics of it if you do have the background that I do expect. So I do expect that you have done programming, that you have an undergraduate degree uh, in a technical field um, where you've done uh, some programming. So, uh, um, uh, but, but again, not necessarily uh, Python programming. So, um, if the audio is unclear, um, I don't know, I, I, I can check if I can make it a little bit louder, but, um, but um, I may not be able to improve it much. So. Uh, I'll increase my mic volume a bit here while I'm continuing on, but uh, but yeah, I don't have really great connection, so yeah, so it could be my end or who knows. Um, Let's see, so, I'll increase that a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, I don't know if that did anything, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, I can try that. So you guys probably don't really need the video as long as you see the desktop. Um, okay, so back kind of the, the structure of the course. Um, Kind of simple on uh, assignment. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I need to update the syllabus. So I haven't really decided on a, a project uh, yet here. So at this point, I've got six or so assignments uh, and two tests. So those would definitely be kind of your assignments. Um, and, and there may or may not be kind of a bigger project. Um, so. so basically about every other week, uh, there'll be a, a an assignment, I don't think I call it a program assignment exactly. So all the assignments will be done using um, Python lecture notebooks. So I'll give you a, le a lecture notebook with some questions and, and things and problems that you have to work on related to the materials that you're supposed to be learning. So, uh, but, but yeah, in general, uh, probably about 40% will be for the exams and 60% will be uh, spread over um, some number of assignments uh, that we do. Uh, at various points. So. Um, so, oh, I, I mean, I guess I, I should say that, uh, so, so this is um, uh, technically a face-to-face -face course, so an E section just means extended, but we do have, of course, our Monday meeting time. Uh, we'll see how things go. I mean, definitely, I'm I'm going to be doing the the the, the online um, um, for a while yet. Um, so, um, so, so, uh, and, and even if I do maybe decide at some point to to, to try some actual face to face sessions, there'll be no requirement uh, for attendance or anything like that. So, you know, if, if you want to stay completely uh, online. Uh, you'll have no problem with that with this class for this semester, okay? I mean, e even in the best of times, I tend to uh, use uh, any face-to-face -face sessions um, more like help sessions, which is what I want to try to kind of do for these, right? So, and kind of what I mean by that is, is I, I will have lecture materials, uh, videos, um, uh, things like that. So what you should try to do is use those materials before these sessions. So uh, before, you know, next Monday, you ought to look at the materials I had for this week, but also try and look at the materials I have for the second unit, the second week as well, kind of before Monday, uh, if, if possible. Uh, and then, 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 you know, the idea is to come into these sessions where people have questions or are ready to start working on the uh, assignment that we're currently working on for, for the class so we can kind of work on those uh, together. Um, and, um, you know, I can answer questions basically that have people and, and maybe even work on the assignment a bit. Uh, with you or at least uh, go through it and give some help uh, and also maybe I'll work through the lecture materials and things so um, Yeah, so I mean our first two weeks are going to be uh, an introduction to Python uh, really so I, I gave um, um, Some additional resources I may not have it here, but if you look uh, on the readme, I know um, I had a lot of links to these things so I, I, I especially recommend the Think Python book. It's a free one, uh, but I like that. A lot of my examples from the first two lecture notebooks and, and videos that I have for this week uh, and next week kind of come out, out of Think Python uh, textbook. And there's a couple of other things here. So if you're more like videos, you might try the Google developers course. So. Um, so yeah, and I'll probably look at some of these video, um, uh, some of these lecture notebooks here uh, in a bit. So yeah, there is there is a, a, a playlist. Uh, I haven't gotten as far as I wanted to. I'm only up to about week four or week five. Uh, but yeah, all the videos I have so far, the new ones that I'm trying to make, um, um, uh, you can kind of scroll down here on the README 
um, and, and find that. So. Um, all right. So I don't know if that's enough, but but those are the kind of the basics. The rest of this is mostly boilerplate and, and kind of an example schedule here. I've already seen a couple of things I need to fix on the assignments um, th that I'm still thinking about. Um, but but yeah, I mean this the schedule is kind of generally uh, about correct. So we'll go through kind of Python um, here for the first two or three weeks. And then we'll get into machine learning proper, starting with regression as a technique. Um, uh, kind of, I'll have a midterm early because that's kind of a natural breaking point, kind of an introduction to machine learning uh, and supervised learning. Um, and then logistic regression is kind of the most basic example of machine learning. And then uh, after that, we'll get into, you know, KNN, Bayes, uh, SVMs, things like that. So. Yeah, the, the, the naming structure for that um, is basically all U00 are meant to be kind of getting started videos. So those are all for this week. And also U01 is getting are for this week, but those are the actual content. So all the U00 videos, um, are things getting your dev box set up um, and kind of some hints on using the 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 jupiter lab jupiter hub environment although i'm going to bring that up in a bit so i might cover some of this again here that i have in this video but then the unit one one is actually the first week video so this is the introduction to python um, um, and some other stuff and then u02 is for next week so numpy and matplotlib and stuff like that Um, okay, good. Other questions here? Uh, so yeah, I mean, I was playing, like I said, I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm used to it. normally on these, this first one I do end up doing more talking than usual. Um, you know, for the future ones, I hope to do less, uh, try to be more question driven. Uh, but, but yeah, I was basically going to, well, I mean, I mean first of all, at this point, um, um, probably your, your most important thing is you should be working on getting your, the, that class dev box set up, okay? So uh, I had a lot of people successfully got it set up. Uh, I mean, a few people um, are having issues. Um, if you don't have it set up, I, I want everybody to try and get it set up uh, by tomorrow. Um, and so either send me an email um, that you successfully got it set up, uh, if you do, or uh, if you don't, uh, send me an email of, of where you're at by, by five o'clock tomorrow and what issue is keeping you from getting it installed, okay? And if I need to, I'll work one-on-one -on -one with people uh, or send you uh, the, a GA your way to help you. I've got a couple of people that maybe can help out. Uh, with technical issues getting this set up. So um, if I, 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 the, it does appear we're still having some issues that, that getting what are known as the, the extensions to set up correctly. Uh, but if, if, um, if when you connect, uh, well, actually I probably haven't even started my dev box yet. I should go ahead and get that started. So, you know, once you've got it installed, if you change into your repository directory, uh, you should just be able to do a vagrant up uh, to bring it up. Um, and you just have to wait on these messages till it tells you that it's kind of booted up before you can try logging in with your browser uh, to the thing. So. Um, oh, I think I already got it running, so that's why it didn't uh, do what I was expecting. You can always do a, a vagrant halt. To, to shut a running one down. This is, I, I think I mentioned in my video this, this is uh, the clean way to shut it down. So, so you should probably be using the command line instead of bringing up the, um, uh, the uh, virtual box GUI and, and, and shutting it down from there. 
Um, so it's probably a little better way normally. So. Um, I, th I think that's the safest way. So the, uh, I haven't tried this, but, but yeah, if you do the bigger up, I mean, you, you can probably start it up from the virtual box GUI, but I'm, uh, I, I should have tested this before now. I'm not completely certain that when you do it from the GUI, if it successfully sets up, if it correctly sets up your shared folders and stuff. So that's why I usually prefer to do it from the command line, just to make certain that it's setting up the, um, the, the, the link um, from, from your host machine folder to the, uh, the, the guest machine's shared folder. So. So, so yeah, you should probably prefer this, although I, I should probably test that out um, and see if it's fine to just start it up from VirtualBox. Um, it probably, you know, it probably works from VirtualBox, although, again, I'm not certain um, if, you're, if your shared folder sets up correctly or not, if you don't do it from the Vagrant up. Um, so, yeah, when, when you do a vagrant up, uh, you just kind of have to wait until it tells you that your machine's booted. Everybody can see my screen, right? Um, wait till it's booted. You know, and another thing you kind of want to look for, like I talk about in one of my videos, um, if you see a, something like this, so this is basically saying that the, the folder um, on my host machine, this folder, which is my repository, is correctly being shared to a folder called slash vagrant inside of my virtual box, okay? So you kind of want to see that just to make certain that you can easily move files back and forth between your, your guest um, uh, and your host machine. So, um, so yeah, if you can get that far. So I, what I started talking about was uh, some people, um, the, the, they get it installed correctly, but you, you notice some issues with um, it has to recompile like matplotlib or some other things. Most all that I think are just issues with the extensions. I thought I had gotten those all worked out, but uh, but but yeah, they apparently aren't completely worked out, but it probably is not going to stop you. The, the extensions, you probably don't need those. Um, or, you know, maybe we can later on, um, if, if we do decide we really need those, uh, get those um, set up. So, so yeah, if, if you get that running, um, you should be able to go to your local host, uh, go to your browser, um, and just do a local host colon 8000. So it's running on port 8000 from your local machine, that, and that should be where it, it's serving and, and finding your Jupyter Hub server. So if, if it can't connect to something, I mean, either it's not running or you mistype something somewhere. Okay. But, but yeah, you should get a sign in. Um, and uh, yeah, I usually just save that password so that uh, so I don't have to type. But they have the username is Vagrant, um, and the password is the same as the username. So since it runs, you know, inside of your this virtual box in your local host, we don't really have to worry about security so much on this virtual um, dev box here. So. Um, All right, but I'm hoping everybody can get to this point, um, you know, uh, today or tomorrow, right? So that we're ready to work on the assignments um, and stuff, okay? Um, the, the Vagrant doesn't have a GUI, but VirtualBox does. So Vagrant is actually working with VirtualBox um, uh, to do the stuff that it does. So, so VirtualBox is meant to be used more kind of by individual users, but Vagrant is meant to give a command line um, front end so you can do more, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, so you can do more involved testing and setup and, 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 and using lots of virtual boxes for different sorts of environments and stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, you should be able to, whatever you're doing Windows or, uh, uh, you know, you should be able to search on your start menu. You guys probably can't see this, but search for VirtualBox um, and uh, bring up the, the VirtualBox GUI, okay? So, but, but, but um, yeah, it's, like I said, probably things that are being managed from VirtualBox, I don't know if it's a good idea to shut them off and turn them on from the VirtualBox GUI. It's probably better to use the Vagrant up and Vagrant halt. Uh, to do that, right? 
And of course, you know, you, you probably won't have all these virtual boxes like I do, but uh, you should only mostly have this unless you've been using virtual box for uh, other stuff. So. Um, so when you first start up um, in here, um, you should have a link to, to so, so basically, um, yeah, let me go over these. So you, you end up um, with an a interface, this is called Jupyter Lab. Um, and you've got the capability for a file browser here. That's what the, the top one is. And it, it can kind of hide and unhide these. So, so Jupyter Lab is kind of a pained uh, interface. Uh, I'll show that in a second. I show that in my videos. Um, I think you only have ML Python class to start off with. This should be the shared folder to your desktop. So everything in here is actually a shared copy with your host uh, machine. So this is where um, you've got all the things, including um, our assignments uh, will all be in here, uh, assignments for the class, uh, and, and all the lecture notebooks uh, will be in here under lectures and so on. So you can browse through this. This should be the same as, like if I open up a file browser on my system and I go to that repository, right? Um, so, um, and I go to the repository that I created, uh, not that class, um, this one. So basically this browser is running on my host machine, but if I put files in here, you know, this, this, is, the, this is the folder, this bead, and that, this is the one that you cloned uh, using the git clone. So any files I put in here should show up in your file browser on your desk machine and vice versa. So, you know, for example, if I wanted to get the syllabus um, copied uh, onto my desk machine for some reason, I could take it from there and, and, and copy it over into my repository subdirectory. Um, and then um, I should see it um, uh, here, the syllabus show up here. But, but you know, you can, you can get files back and forth then between your host and your guest machine uh, using that shared um, uh, uh, folder there, okay? Um, so anyway, that, that's a basic file browser, but you, I mean, yeah, you can rename things and create folders and, uh, and actually drag and drop stuff actually works from this as well. So, I mean, you can actually drag these things around and uh, uh, move them. I don't want to move that one, but, uh, but yeah, maybe I'm going to move this over to my docs folder, for example. Um, oh, I, I guess I already have the syllabus in our docs directory. So uh, there you go. The, the host and guest basically means the host machine is my, my system, is my desktop system, system that, that's, that I normally use. The, the, the guest machine is the virtual box that you install, okay? So, so the, the guest machine is the, the virtual machine that's running Jupyter, that's basically running a, a Unix um, a Ubuntu operating system and is running the Jupyter Hub uh, server. Um, that you connect to through the web interface, okay? But yeah, your virtual box, if I, if I guess I closed up over my, closed my virtual box, um, but that virtual box GUI, um, this thing here that's running, um, is running, it's, it's, we're running this, in this case, headless. Um, so, so you don't actually have a desktop you can connect to. So you have to connect to, uh, through the, the, the web-based Jupyter, hub server, okay? Uh, but, but yeah, it really is running Linux uh, and Ubuntu, okay? So I don't know if we'll need this, but you could actually run, open a terminal uh, and you'll get an Ubuntu uh, command line interface on your guest machine. So if you know, if you know or use Linux, uh, you, you can open up your terminal there and you can also work with your, your files and your file system and the, the, the guest operating system. Uh, from from a go, from a command line um, interface, so so we might need to drop into that for some things, but um, 
but yeah, it's not really the goal of this class is <laughs> so. Um, All right, other questions before I move on to that? Um, so yeah, that's the basic file browser. Um, so here is something to manage your session. So yeah, I started that terminal. So now I've got that terminal session uh, running. So you can, you can start and stop your kernels from here, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, so you can, have, you can have different kinds of what are known as kernels or, or, or sessions, uh, terminals, uh, ed editors, um, things like that. So let me go in and actually run um, a lecture notebook, um, a, a Jupyter notebook. So I'm going to, oh, I, I forgot to mention, so uh, there's a couple of subdirectories under lectures. Uh, HOML is basically uh, the lectures for our hands-on machine learning. So this will be where most of the lectures are. Uh, some of these are from previous versions of the class. So um, I've got some alternative videos you can also watch from this Dr. Uh, Ng, um, um, which is a very good course. I recommend it, but uh, I got some additional lecture notebooks from there when I was primarily using those videos from the course um, and things. But, uh, but yeah, let's open up. Um, uh, let me open up maybe uh, a Python. So for the first two weeks, we'll, we'll kind of be doing the Python uh, stuff. So if you look in the Python stack, those are the videos in my, uh, those are the lecture notebooks that I go over in the videos for the first two weeks here. So. Um, but yeah, you can open up um, uh, lecture notebooks here. Um, Maybe I'll show kind of real quickly. So if I wanted to, you can open up multiple of these and get a paint, uh, get a, a tabbed. Uh, but you can also use the the paned um, layout here. So if I want to get some more space, I could hide my file browser and like maybe if I need to do some stuff side by side, I can drag this tab over here. So now I can have my lecture one video and my lecture two video side by side and work with them together. So. These are all right, I think by default, because of the way I saved these, everything's gonna be running the Python 3-DataSci kernel. Um, uh, uh, you might wanna check that you can change which kernel you're, you're using. The, the regular Python 3 would probably be okay, but later on when we start doing stuff with um, our machine learning libraries, you'll definitely want to have the Python 3 data science kernel. That's the one where we installed all the libraries you'll need. It should be available in that kernel. So the matplotlib and, and um, the, the pandas and um, numpy and, 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 uh, and, and all the rest are in there. So. Um, so I mentioned that because, yeah, that allows us to uh, come back to this idea of kernel. So now I've got two lecture notebooks. They're running separate kernels. So I mean, I guess you can think of these basically as two. Uh, a kernel is kind of like running an interactive Python session. Okay, so so these are these are running Python interpreters uh, that you can use to that, that that are actually whenever you execute a command in these lecture notebooks. Um, it, it sends it off to the Python interpreter uh, to run basically, which is basically this kernel. So, so yeah, I mean, you can actually run an interactive uh, session by doing a console, a Python console. So um, this is more like running a, um, uh, a Python interpreter from a command line. So, uh, So I can type in commands uh, here interactively and, and run them, Python code. So. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, continue on, I'll come back to these, these notebooks here, but yeah, continue on. The rest of these, you know, so, as you're using Jupyter Hub, you'll probably learn, become more proficient in it. Um, I give some hints about 
usage sorts of things and some of my U00 videos, getting started videos, but you know, you can use this to help you kind of learn kind of the keyboard shortcuts and the, the kind of commands and things you can do. So that's just a, yeah, command kind of um, search and browser here. Um, um, I don't think we, we don't really need to use the properties very much. So you probably won't ever use the properties or not too much anyway. Um, and, and something to manage tabs. So the thing I was talking about um, uh, here, if, if your extensions didn't install quite correctly, you might not have this, this extension for, um, this basically gives an outline view uh, of your, of, of the notebook. So, so this is all the, the sections and, and, and um, uh, subsections that I have in my notebook here. Or if I switch over to this one, it should give me my outline view of this one. So. But yeah, it's okay if you don't have that. It, and, and you might not have these installed correctly depending on how your installation of the dev box goes. So if everything went correct, I should have installed these for you. Um, so, and later on I'll kind of show maybe um, what these are, so, but you don't, you probably don't really need these or, or you definitely don't need these to get started. If, if you didn't get these, you can worry about that later. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of it for the basic sections. Um, so I usually like to give myself some room, kind of hide that over there. Um, Let's see, so maybe a few more things and then maybe I could talk a little bit about Python if, if people want. Um, so some basic things about Jupyter Notebooks. So we'll, you'll, you'll probably be spending a lot of your time uh, using these, uh, these notebooks uh, for the materials for the class and, and uh, these will be how you'll work on the assignments for the class. Um, Jupyter Notebooks is a cell-based, uh, environment. So basically you have what are called um, cells uh, and there's there's two basic types of cells. There's markdown cells which are for holding textual information. Um, that's what this is here. Um, and then there's um, code cells, right? Uh, there's actually a third type, a raw cell, which I rarely use. So, so mostly code cells and markdown cells. Um, you can always add in new cells. So, so if you want to, um, you can do like a plus here or learn the keyboard shortcut um, to like create a new cell, right? And again, you can, you can make this, by default it would be a code cell or you can change it to a, to a markdown cell, either or. So some of your assignments, um, I will have you uh, answer some questions uh, in English. So, so, you, so you do need to, to use a markdown cell correctly when you're, doing something, um, um, uh, an answer to a question in English, um, and uh, you should use a code cell to, to, you know, to write Python code or whatever uh, and, and answer a question for an assignment uh, using code, right? So markdown cells support um, markdown, which, you know, you might want to look that up if, if you're not familiar with markdowns becoming pretty much a standard in lots of places. So, so the, the standard markdown allows you to do things like specify a level one heading using a pound sign. Level two headings uh, using double pound and so on. Um, and you can have bulleted lists. But, but you know, I mean, this is all markdown. So this is all just plain text. Uh, we have one more again, numbered lists. Uh, you can do bold, underline, and so on, okay. But, but uh, you know, this is a mark a mark up language like uh, like HTML maybe would be the one most, uh, the most uh, familiar example of a markup language. So if, if you, the way you render or execute one of these cells, um, I mean, you can hit the, 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 the button here to, to, to run the selected cell, for example. 
for a markdown cell, that would just render it. So it'll take the markdown and, and render it as um, rich text, basically. So you know, level one header, level two header, bulleted lists, uh, and so on, right? Um, I usually use shift enter. So shift enter will, will run uh, the cell that you're currently in. So if I want to run that, or let's create like a, a Python cell. So the hello world. So if you're in a cell, you're the, 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 the cells are kind of modal. So you're either like this, so I can, I can edit it. Um, or you're, um, you're outside of this. So, so there, there's a lot of, if you want to get really productive, you know, instead of using the menu and all these buttons, you know, kind of learning how to move around. Um, and, and you can like uh, shift these cells, although I'm blanking now, but the, you can add new cells. Um, so before and after uh, using keyboard shortcuts. And then you can change from the, the kind of the, the, the editing mode, or sorry, from the, the, the organizing mode to the editing mode by hitting enter uh, to get back into editing a cell, and then shift enter to execute it. So. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll leave most of that for you guys to discover, um, uh, you know, whatever level you need in order to feel productive and using these notebooks and, and changing things and, and um, moving around in them, so. But that's kind of the basics, right? So markdown, markdown cells um, and uh, code cells here. Um, here's a big one. So most of these notebooks, and for when you do the, the notebooks for uh, assignments for the class, by convention, usually a notebook should run cleanly from top to bottom. What I mean by that, and, and now for Jupyter Hub, they've got a nice button to do that. So if you do this one, it'll restart, restart the kernel. So it'll restart the Python interpreter kernel for this notebook, and it will run all of the code cells um, from starting from the first one and run them um, uh, in sequence, one by one. Okay? So these, these code cells are meant to be uh, read like a book um, and run like a book, right? So, so it's, it's um, um, basically, the first one is run, and then whatever the results of this first cell that are run will be available in the interpreter on the second cell, and then subsequent cells, basically. Although you can run these cells out of order by running a, um, a cell by hand. So, but anyway, so, so uh, for like for your assignments, before you submit a, an assignment to me inside of one of these lecture notebooks, make certain that you do test, that you restart restart the kernel um, and run all these, and, and that they can cleanly run all the cells. So that, that went pretty fast, that was a little bit tough to see, but, but it really did rerun all those cells there, so. Um, if we watch it. So you can see down here that it's running the ones above it, and then we finished, so we, we ran all those, so. All right, if, if if your notebook is stopping, uh, some some of my lecture notebooks, I am per, I on purpose have um, some cells that aren't meant to run, you know. But but for your assignments, you really should, um, you know, shouldn't have a cell in there that has like a syntax error or so or something. So. So here at this point, it'll just run down to that part, and you'll have to kind of scroll through here and find, um, you know, so if you go out of the bottom, you'll see that uh, these didn't run. So if there's no number there, these cells didn't get rerun. Uh, we can kind of scroll back up and find, okay, where did, where did we get to where it couldn't continue on, right? And then you can do things like uh, learn the, the, you can run from this point down instead of rerunning everything. So, you know, we can do things like run um, selected cell and all below to finish that off after I fix that error, that error and so on. Oops. 
Okay, is that uh, any questions? Is that uh, helping people? I mean, that's the most common thing that I do with these notebooks until for this course, some of the notebooks are going to have some cells that, that take a long time to run. So once you start getting things that take a long time to run, um, you don't use, you know, rerun everything quite so often, right? But uh, for basic notebooks, I mean, I, I often uh, am just doing things, adding things in there and then just rerun it, the whole thing. Uh, make certain that everything cleanly runs. Um, and, and we get uh, everything working and get output from all these that we're expecting. So. Um, all right. So yeah, I don't know what else. Uh, I mean, that's a bit, if you if you can get your dev box up um, and you can see these lecture notebooks. I mean, that's the place to start, right? So so you want to start uh, working on and, and I encourage you. Um, you know, don't just, just read these no lecture notebooks, right? So like when you start here learning Python, uh, you know, actually, let me stop the kernel here. And we'll restart it and clear all the outputs. So yeah, I mean, don't, don't just kind of read through these, you know, um, um, actually execute these cells maybe one by one, so, so start with a clean notebook, so do a, a restart kernel, like I just did there, um, kernel uh, restart and clear all outputs uh, and, and run these, you know. And, and don't just run them, you know, but uh, add your own code and try things out. Right, and, and, and maybe even, you know, add new cells, try out different things. Um, so like uh, an example of a variable and do some formatted output. So on, okay. So anyway, I mean, you know, that's kind of the power of these, these, these notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, uh, they're, they're meant to be like interactive um, uh, books, right? So um, um, uh, an interleaving of, of traditional text to be read, but then executable source code that you can uh, have examples of uh, and execute and then also modify and try things out. So, so yeah, if you're not actually running the, the, the example, code um, and modifying things and trying things out, you're missing half of the power of, of kind of using these lecture notebooks. So. Let's see here. Um, I was thinking that I might, uh, yeah, I mean, talk a little bit about Python, although I'm maybe hoping to see if people have some more questions about things here. Uh, so, um, the, the, there are maybe one or two things that I think will be useful right away before I maybe move on to talking about Python a little bit. Um, so one thing I'd make heavy use of in these lecture notebooks um, is the built-in help system. Um, so What was I looking for? Um, so yeah, this, I mean, one way you can get it is showing the contextual help here. I mean, there's other ways to find it. I'm just kind of blanking on, on um, I, I, I mean, I know, I thought it was like view contextual help or something. Uh, anyway. Um, And, and yeah, if, if, if feel free to also, you know, correct me or, or if you know where it is, if you've already used JupyterHub. Um, anyway, uh, th this is a, a good thing to, to use here. Um, so I often keep 
the contextual help open, maybe have it over in a side pane or something. So uh, what it should do is, is basically whenever you're working in code cells, um, uh, it will show the stuff relevant to it, the, the Python documentation, right? So sometimes it'll be more useful than others. So a lot of the built-in or, or basic functions in Python don't have a whole lot, so, so it might not. But once you get to start using like the NumPy functions and, and uh, uh, scikit-learn functions and stuff, uh, it'll, it'll tend to be much more useful um, to have that on so you can see. So anyway, so kind of that's the documentation for print. Um, let's see if we can get another one. So it only works, um, as someone kind of pointed out to me, uh, wanted me to kind of remind people, it only works uh, if the notebook has been run. So it can only kind of show help on stuff that's been interpreted. So if I do something like, uh, like uh, uh, do a kernel, uh, re uh, restart and clear all the outputs, so that gets me back to a kernel where nothing has been run and interpreted. Um, right. So now, you know, it, if, if nothing has been interpreted by the kernel, um, uh, it doesn't really have any information about the, these things. Okay. So, so you won't actually be able to get uh, different contextual help uh, until you run cells um, and get the stuff loaded, basically. So. So like, uh, oh, well, uh, I guess maybe the built-in stuff. So, so I'm wrong. So, so yeah, it, it is bringing up for like the, the type function. So type is a built-in function uh, you can use in, in Python to find out the type of things. So let's rerun everything above that to this point. So. All right. Um, So anyway, I, I, I find this useful, um, um, especially when you start working with the libraries that we're going to be using, matplotlib, um, numpy, and things, uh, to be able to, to kind of see the help for um, the things that you're working on, uh, the functions right now that you uh, need stuff with. Um, okay, let's see how many people do we, do we have still? Oh, there's still quite a few people watching here. Um, I'm going to have to take like maybe a, a five minute break here uh, and I will come back and do some more. Okay. Um, so just, I've been drinking a lot of water here and <laughs> I had a class right before this one. So. Um, so why don't we take five minutes, see if you guys can, you know, think of some questions and stuff. I think basically, you know, unless I start getting some more questions and things, I'm probably going to maybe talk a little bit about Python, uh, but maybe not too much. Um, see, see if anybody has questions about Python or things, uh, but, but yeah, I'll do that when we get back. Uh, but yes, yeah, think of some questions, maybe take five minutes, take a bath, bath and break of yourself. So, and I'll be, I'll be right back then.
Okay, um, I am back here just kind of thinking about what to maybe kind of go over next. So let me wait another minute, maybe. Oh, um, just so this video doesn't end up being extremely big, I might try and stop the recording and then start a new one. I don't know if I can do that easily. And let me see here. Although I'd hate to stop it and then not be able to start a new one. 